Hi, it's Tuesday, June 18th. This is Potential Tropical Cyclone 1 over the Gulf of Mexico, visible satellite imagery about midday central time. This is a large sprawling gyre that has come northwest off of the Yucatan Peninsula and is now centered somewhere in here. Very ill-defined though, this is not a tropical cyclone with a compact, well-defined center of circulation. Instead, we have a very sloppy area of light wind here in the middle of the Gulf. In general, you can make out the periphery flow, kind of orbiting it here, outlining this general circulation as the wind flows like this over a very large region with the center somewhere down here. Lots of weather spreading well north of this center of circulation with some rain occurring over Louisiana this morning starting to propagate towards the west. So this is several hundred miles to the north of where potential tropical cyclone one is centered. And just so everyone understands, the National Hurricane Center issues advisories on potential tropical cyclones if they have a chance of developing and are going to impact land within the next couple of days. This system meets that definition. It seems unlikely at this point that it will actually become a real tropical storm, but that won't really matter in terms of impacts to the Gulf Coast as they will be the same regardless. This is the ASCAT pass that's now about 12 hours old. We're expecting a new one soon, but I can't wait that long. But this is showing the surface wind measurements from ASCAT C. Here's that big light wind area near the center of circulation at the time. And you can see that the maximum wind band is way up here, 200 to 400 miles north of the center. And right now, all these red colors indicate maximum winds in the 30 to 35 mile per hour range out over the Gulf. These will be impacting the coastline. There's onshore flow into Texas, and this will increase as the system nears landfall over the next day, day and a half. And so there could be some coastal flooding issues that come with that, depending on exactly where you are. There's a recon plane out there running the lawnmower pattern at the moment, looking for what it can find, but it's all very light wind. White and teal colors here indicate almost no wind at all, under 10 knots or so. The pressure is pretty low. The surface station has 1,001 millibars, and that's typical of these monsoon depression type of systems. Very low central pressure, but not a lot of wind at the center. Now, in terms of the track of this thing, it's pretty straightforward. This is the GFS 500 millibar map showing a big ridge over the northeastern US, and this has been causing a lot of heat in that region of the country. That same ridge is going to be building its nose towards the south central part of the country and the Great Plains. So over the next couple of days, you'll see it build out into the Great Plains, and uh, our system is down here in blue and getting directed towards the west and into Mexico due to the easterly flow on the southern side of this ridge that extends out into the plains. So the track is straightforward and the system will essentially move west northwest or westward into Mexico. And then again, a lot of the weather is well to its north. So this is going to impact the US despite the track into Mexico. And for that reason, when you see this map, of course, this doesn't mean a whole lot to you. This is the center of something that doesn't have a lot of weather at the center. All the weather is up here. And so we're going to be seeing, you know, tropical storm warnings across this portion of Mexico near the central track and then all the way up to Matagorda Bay here right now in Texas. And you can see the wind field outlined in orange here, tropical storm force or 40 mile per hour winds. It may even extend farther north than that. You saw some of the max wind band is actually much farther north uh, and about to move on shore into Texas within the next 24 hours. So really this orange area is perhaps even a bit larger here. It's just a really large circulation, but the good news is the winds are capped at around that tropical storm force range. So we're not expecting much above 40 miles per hour here, but, we, but could still cause some coastal flooding issues due to the onshore flow and high surf at the coast. Of course, rainfall is gonna be really the big story here. And so there is some flash flooding and mudslide potential. And this is a US centric map here, but it shows that most of Southeast Texas has a at least moderate chance for excessive rainfall that could lead to inland flooding problems as far inland as San Antonio. With Houston, it's a closer call. You can see the gradient here. A lot of the rain is going to be near and south of Houston, but if it creeps just far enough north, we could still get a little too much in the Houston and Galveston Bay area, and there could be flooding issues there as well, but it might be kind of close depending on exactly how far north the rain shield gets. Now looking at the NHC tropical weather outlook, there's actually three areas uh, to monitor right now. One is potential tropical cyclone one, that's the red X 
Uh, there's actually another system that could develop after that in a few days in the same area. That's this yellow hatched circle in the same spot where PTC1 currently resides. We'll talk about that in a second. In the last video, we also talked about this area of disturbed weather east of the Bahamas. That's still outlined in the outlook. It's down to a 10 or 20% chance of development and chances have never really been that high, but I'll briefly cover it here uh, just to update you from the last video two days ago. There's still an old front kind of draped across the western Atlantic and there's a surface trough here with southerly wind, northeasterly wind on the other side. So there is a bit of a trough axis here and that's going to propagate toward the west northwest in the general vicinity of Florida and Georgia over the next couple of days. Uh, but as we discussed a couple of days ago in the last video, the environment is not optimal. If we look at a map that shows low level spin or vorticity in coloring, which shows the little disturbance here, along with upper level wind flow in the black wind barbs, we'll see there's a big upper level low to the west of the system. And uh, this gets entangled under the eastern side of that upper level low. So you can see southerly flow over it aloft. And this continues west and does move toward Florida, but this, this upper level low doesn't really go away, and it's still over top of this disturbance, and that is unfavorable for many reasons for significant development of this particular trough. And if we look at the actual surface wind here on the GFS, the GFS was developing a small tropical storm for a little while, uh, but now it's really asymptoting to just an open trough solution. So there's the trough on Wednesday afternoon, and then it propagates towards the Florida coastline. And you do see a, a little area of low wind and a little bit of a kink in the wind flow here, but there's really not a lot to write home about here. Maybe some elevated winds and rain over a portion of the Southeast US coastline if this forecast were to pan out. And most other modeling is pretty similar at this point. And I would characterize the trends as becoming less aggressive over time. So we've never really been too worried about this, but a, a period of slightly elevated disturbed weather could be occurring Thursday and Friday uh, near the southeast U.S. coastline, but not a big deal at this particular point. Back at the NHC outlook here, this is the third area to consider, this area of yellow in the western Gulf of Mexico. This is the second coming of the Central American Gyre, or at least the attempted second coming in about four or five days. Uh, this is a look at the GFS 850 millibar uh, low level wind flow showing the current iteration of the Central American Gyre, which is going to move into Mexico as we just discussed. And uh, this is a view of the Eastern Pacific here just to illustrate that as this moves westward into Mexico, we're going to see a continued evolution of this westerly uh, river of moisture coming into Central America. And you can see the easterlies in the Caribbean and across the Yucatan Peninsula. So we see a resurgence of cyclonic turning over Guatemala and Mexico. And this makes an attempt to come north again. And we see another area of low pressure developing in the southern Gulf of Mexico. However, the wind kind of gets taken out of its sails a little bit because the original Central American gyre vorticity source, this circulation, this propagates across Mexico and out into the East Pack. And you'll see that show up here. So you can see the circulation move west of Mexico. And this kind of propagates uh, via its natural Rossby wave propagation towards the west. And you can kind of see that here. And as it exits the scene, it kind of takes the wind out of the sails of this westerly moist burst into Central America. And you can see that die over time. We have, you know, 30 knots of moist advection towards Central America that then declines quite a bit. And a lot of the cyclonic momentum gets taken out of this area as the ghost of the original gyre kind of propagates into the Pacific and leaves this behind. So for that reason, at least, or partially for that reason, most modeling shows this being pretty weak. There's some dry air in the vicinity as well that kind of chokes it off on most model runs. And I can show you maybe the European model as well, just really briefly. Uh, shows a similar evolution where you do get something here and i'm not saying nothing could develop but at the moment modeling keeps it pretty weak at the moment uh, so we're just monitoring for now and we'll check back in in a couple days and uh, see how things have changed but we could be doing this again where we're talking about a broad weak system generally moving into the western gulf and potentially bringing rain and moisture and flooding issues into parts of the western gulf so we'll check back in and talk about this weekend here in a couple of days. 
That's about it for this video. Again, broad and loose system, but very, very big and lots of rain currently moving through southern Louisiana, and then will propagate into southeast Texas and northeastern Mexico as well, where flooding hazards are kind of the story with this system. So be careful if you're in a flood prone area and be safe this week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.